We continue on to other stuff like the case that uh, BBC Africa reported on. For three months, the world has looked on in horror at the scenes from Gaza. The huge numbers of Palestinian civilians killed or forced to move, the sheer level of destruction. According to a 1948 convention, genocide is a crime committed with the intent to destroy a national, ethnic, racial or religious group in whole or in part. That, South Africa says, is what Israel is doing in Gaza. Just look at the statistics. Israel has killed more than 23,000 Palestinians. More than 300,000 housing units have been damaged or destroyed. And around 85% of the population has been displaced. Then there's the question of Israel's intent. Look at what Israeli politicians have been saying since October the 7th. Israel's president. It's an entire nation out there that's responsible. It's hardline minister for national security. They're all terrorists and they should also be destroyed. And the deputy speaker of parliament. We all have one common goal. Now you might be wondering why this is not BBC World or regular old BBC. Why is it none of those channels that reported on this? And it's simply BBC News Africa. Well, that's because those other BBC outlets are doing a really piss poor job of talking about this, I would say, important historic moment. I don't know what's going on with that. I find it very strange. I find it odd, really. But uh, yeah, at least one of the outlets on BBC is covering it, though. Erasing the Gaza Strip from the face of the earth. But can any of this be said to be proof of genocide? Remember, this is not just about war crimes. Genocide is notoriously difficult to prove. You have to have evidence. Unless you're Israel, in which case it literally is not that, uh, not that difficult to prove because for some weird reason, every Israeli official thinks that like nobody has the translate tweet option or that no one in America is going to translate what they are saying in Hebrew. Sometimes in English too, but specifically in Hebrew to the Israeli population. Or even no one in America has access to TikTok where they can see literal on the ground IDF soldiers celebrating the atrocities and doing weird TikTok dances as they blow up a kindergarten. It's weird. I don't know why they think that like we can't see the stuff that's going on. But yeah, it's it's very odd. It's very odd to think that, but IDF could simply go offline. Exactly. Exactly. This is something I say all the time. It's so strange. One of the greatest examples I, oh the, okay, here. I know they're all they're dying to call us monkeys and all types of racial slurs over there on Israeli Twitter. Like clockwork. When I worked at L, the teams arriving in South Africa had to be escorted armed by the security personnel of the Shimbet. It is the only country in the world where this was the custom, perhaps even today. It just shows how a country that used to be a paradise turned into a hell with the transition of a regime of monkeys that came down from the tree. I am waiting with bated breath on the Israeli counter argument somehow featuring the white genocide that South Africans are experiencing. It is going to happen. I'm just waiting for when. It's going to be funny. It's going to happen. I'm talking like an official arm of the Israeli government is literally going to say that the real genocide South Africa is conducting is actually the white genocide. And I'm very excited for it. I hope they do it in court. That would be really funny. Yeah, translating Hebrew tweets this week has been wild. It's since October 7th, translating Hebrew tweets has been phenomenal. Very interesting. Yeah, this guy's a Kahanist, by the way, I think. This is a Kahanist uh, symbol, right? They, they're, they're terrorists. <laughs> like, uh, uh, Jewish supremacist extremists. Such a weird thing to, to explain. Um, do, 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 do. I wouldn't call this historic, to be honest. There are going to be no major ramifications out of the ICJ case. Few may have their minds changed, but Zionists would just say the ICJ is anti-Semitic and that there's no real genocide. America is still the hegemonic force in the region and the world, even though our influence is waning globally. Genocide or not, Palestinians still... I mean, I agree with you and I also disagree with you. I tried to stress that in the conversation that we were having about the marginal improvements, the marginal improvements that it has in the, it, like the pressure points that you open up in this situation. Just like with Amnesty International openly stating and Human Rights Watch openly stating that Israel is an apartheid state, it gives the real permission for many people to conduct themselves in a way that is more critical of Israel without getting an endless sequence of attacks. Because, look, 
I've been in this for a very long time. I've talked about Israel for the past 10 years, right? And oftentimes people would say the same shit that like I was anti-Semitic. I'm being anti-Semitic. I'm being anti-Semitic for saying Israel is an apartheid state. And at least after 2021, I could directly point to an institution that liberals do care about beyond the facts, because unfortunately they do care about that sort of thing, to make a better argument, to go, no, you don't understand. It's not just me saying it. Here is B'Tselem saying it. It's not just me saying it, which is an Israeli rights group. Here's not just me saying it, but also Human Rights Watch saying it. Like that does legitimately help um, optics do in this situation kind of matter. And I don't think people think about that, uh, especially for what the Palestinians need. What the Palestinians need is awareness to their conditions, to the atrocities, first and foremost, because that's the stage they're at right now. They need that more than material support. And they are the first to tell you, like those living in Gaza are the first to tell you, just don't stop talking about Palestine. Don't stop talking about Gaza. Don't stop talking about the occupation. But more importantly than even the occupation, the, the push for a ceasefire. So anyway, just something to consider. And I think that the ICJ's decision will work in a similar way. I think I might get banned if I repeat here in English what this Israeli screenwriter Mini Asiag says here about South Africa and its relation to the ICJ case against Israel. So I will leave you all to just the press the translate tweet button. When does Israel declare war on South Africa? As if any backward and backward third world country with one of the highest crime and murder rates in the world, which has nothing to do with the region, can file a complaint in The Hague alleging genocide against a democratic and progressive country, and then everyone stands up and turns it into an international event? Stupid and anti-Semitic world. Bro, when you're a hammer, everything looks like a nail. I love that a lot of uh, ultra uh, Zionist, ultra nationalist people have only one speed and that is just blow them up. What, what do you mean? I don't understand. Are you criticizing me? Well, you must be Hamas and therefore uh, get ready for the bombs. At a certain point, you're going to run out of bombs, dog. This is what I'm trying to explain to people. Oh, let's open up another front in Lebanon, right? Oh, let's open up maybe even another front and another front and another front. It's like even America doesn't have the, the leeway here. Liberal and neoliberals keep using that word progressive, but I don't think they know what that means. Yes. No, they, they care about it specifically as it, uh, it pertains to just like social justice from a very Western lens. Ofer Kasif stands with South Africa in this ICJ. Of course he does. What is this one? At first, I thought, well, we'll bomb South Africa. Then I did some thinking and realized that any other country could also take us to The Hague. So I realized there was no choice but to bomb The Hague itself. Even if we, the abducted Ahoram Barak was there, there was no choice. I mean, some of these are f ridiculous, right? Like, who cares? It's like one-offs. But it's, it's pretty funny uh, to see where we're at here, you know? That has to be satire. Israelis in October. Look at this African soldier. Hamas fears this diversity. We love our black Israelis. Israelis in January. <laughs> Yeah. One of our faves wrote an article. Here's the first line. Oh, I saw this. This is also Eve, Eve Fartlow is back, everybody. Uh, she wrote an incredible, uh, she wrote an incredible article, A Plague in the Hague. I'm not a lawyer, but I am an expert in anti-Semitism. That's right. The free parking, the Jews are tired. Tweet creator Eve Fartlow herself. Awesome. So yeah, that's where we're at in the situation and this predicament on uh, this reception. You have to do a Scottish accent? I refuse. I refuse to associate Scotland with Eve Fartlow. Well, Let's continue. Or a pattern of behavior. Let's finish this and I'll show you what American media is doing. Way. Israel will argue that it was acting in self-defense following the dreadful Hamas attacks of October the 7th. That it had no choice but to act. We're still motivated, Israel would argue, presumably on the basis of its military campaign. So even if they have gone beyond what the law permits them to do in a military campaign, it is still driven by the logic of the military campaign and not by uh, a genocidal logic. It'll take the court years to reach a final verdict. But if it thinks the South African case has some merit, okay. it could issue a temporary remedy known as a provisional measure designed to curb Israel's military campaign. Do you guys get it? Like the provisional measure would be a, 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 an immediate implementation of ceasefire, right? Like a demand from the United Nations to, uh, to, to push for a ceasefire. So here's the thing. Here's the thing. No, 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 no. That's huge. That's huge. Because that basically is a recognition that it is real. Okay. That the, the ethnic cleansing intent is there. The genocidal intent is there enough for there to, 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 
B, a United Nations push for a ceasefire. Now, who enforces that ceasefire is a good question. America, obviously, is not going to be on board with it. But the point is this. Just like what I talked about the Human Rights Watch and Amnesty International, it does not matter. What matters is the, the, the pressure. You're opening up a different valve of pressure. It's like saying, well, the Houthis are simply just blocking trade on the Red Sea. How important is that? These things actually chip away. You don't make a war costly just by having your troops outmaneuver the other side's troops and then kill more of the other side's uh, troops than your troops die. That's not how this works. That's not how modern combat works. That's not how counterinsurgency and settler colonialism works. Optics do matter in this circumstance, which is why even a genuine acknowledgement uh, from the ICJ is damaging. And Israel knows that it's damaging, which is why it's started trying to do counter-propaganda against it. You know who actually perfectly uh, explained this position? Jezza himself. That's right. Let me see. Uh, there was a... There was a uh, Jeremy Corbyn interview that I saw where he talked about like how this is a good first step. Well, not a good first step, but like it's just in the mar Here. Here it is. Jeremy Corbyn speaking to uh, Al Jazeera. This is what he had to say about the ICJ's decision, potentially. Do you think anything is going to change if there is a decision in favor of the South African application? Everything is incremental. Every time you step out on the street and wave a Palestinian flag and say, stop the killing of Palestinian people, every time somebody, me or anyone else, speaks up in a parliament, that's an incremental difference. And the arguments about the arms trade, the supply of weapons to Israel, and the fact that President Biden sought to bypass Congress because he was afraid of the reaction there in order to send more weapons to Israel indicates a weakness in his position. And so this weekend, we've got demonstrations all over the world. There's a voice of ordinary people who are just appalled what's going on. And also, I want to say thank you to those people in Israel that signed in support of the South African application to the the International Court of Justice and those in Israel that have been demonstrating against the occupation of the West Bank and, and of Gaza because they want also to be able to live in peace. It's not going to happen tomorrow, that I know. But if we just walk by on the other side and ignore what's happening to the Palestinian people, then we become complicit. What a wonderful man. What a wonderful man. Yeah, here he is in 1984 protesting the South African apartheid, defend the right to demonstrate against apartheid, join this picket being arrested for it, and here he is alongside, I believe, the South African uh, liaison uh, or the South African uh, uh, coalition that brought the case, post-apartheid obviously, against the ongoing uh, apartheid regime and, and genocide of Palestinians in Gaza. Do you think after all this, all this ends, people in the UK will forget that all that Corbyn is anti-Semite stuff? My friend, I do not spend a lot of time thinking about British people. I would like to keep it that way, with exceptions, obviously, with notable exceptions. If I were to concern myself with the opinions of British people, oh my lord, I already got my own hogs and hogalinas to worry about here in America. Before I start thinking about British hogs, the gammons, the Tories, the turfs at Turf Island, 